Hello, Manitoba. I'm Larry McIntosh, and I'll be your host for the next hour. I hope you've been enjoying some of the many Manitoba-grown vegetables that are available right now. Pika market growers have been extremely busy harvesting their crops for your family to enjoy. Now, here's a list of all the Manitoba-grown vegetables that are available right now at your local store. So ask for Manitoba-grown if you're at your store. But here's what's available. Beets, broccoli, carrots, green, red, and savoy cabbage, kale, leeks, cooking and red onions, red, white, and yellow pearl onions, parsnips, pumpkins, shallots, green acorn and butternut squash, rutabagas, red, russet, and yellow flesh potatoes. All available at your store right now. Our big crops, of course, are carrots, onions, and potatoes, but all these are available right now. If it it says peak in the market on the label, you are guaranteed it is grown right here in Manitoba. My guest this morning is Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindigo. Good morning. Good morning, Larry. It's actually afternoon, so good afternoon. Good I'm afternoon, so used Larry. to doing the show in the morning that, you know, I, yeah, I'm I was, stumbling around. Sorry about that. I didn't want to correct you. You should have corrected me because it doesn't make wrong. sense. Sunday yeah. afternoon. But yes. the, the show was on Saturday morning for like, I don't know, four years. It's hard to get out of that habit. Yes. Well, it is afternoon, so I'm, I'm enjoying that. I don't have to get up so early. <laughs> How have you been? I've been great, thanks. It's been a uh, summer that's too short. Uh, by all accounts, they seem to be getting shorter. I don't know. Can't be aging, so I don't know what else it is. It hasn't been a bad summer, though. No. No, it's been... A few warm days, no question. We're well into fall with some good weather here. Beautiful, beautiful weekend, beautiful. I'm happy with this weather. You're happy? Yeah. So, Shindigo, can you tell yes. us a little bit about the company, what it does? I know people see your signs everywhere, but... Well, we're also Manitoba grown. We came out of the ground in Portage La Prairie as well. Right. Uh, we are uh, a, an integrated commercial real estate company. So we brokerage, which is where we started. So we do brokerage for commercial properties, finding people, industrial sites, office sites, and retail. Uh, we sell investment projects uh, as well as do leasing and for tenants, tenant mandate leasing, as well as we have a development uh, business here. And that's probably what we're most known for. Uh, creating uh, new developments and expanding our tax base and job opportunities, we hope. So would that be like shopping centers or, or strip malls? Yeah, or? the range would be uh, we build in a lot of places where your growers are, from Winkler and Steinbeck and Brandon and uh, Portage La Prairie and Selkirk, of course. Uh, we really like uh, those markets. Uh, they've been good to us, and we've been able to build a lot of things there. But we build for Walmart. We have, uh, unfortunately, built for Target at once uh, as well. Uh, and uh, But Walmart, uh, Sobeys, Safeway, a lot of restaurant tenants uh, uh, have succeeded on our sites, ranging from Boston Pizza, which I think we've done about 25 of them. Mm. Dollarama, another Canadian success story. Uh, I think we've done about 30 of those. And uh, the usual suspects beyond that, as well as... Uh, residential uh, property management. So I have to do a shout out for Sarah at One Evergreen, who's your building manager there, and we've been talking to her recently. She's outstanding. We love uh, Sarah, and uh, all the folks that get to work with her love Sarah. She runs a great show, and we're very happy that she can make everybody comfortable. And she's been there a long time. Yes, I, I, not as long as me, but almost. <laughs> almost as long as you. So are, are there new, I know there's new retailers coming down. Overweighty Foods is coming to town. There was yes. a big announcement not too long ago. Would, are you involved in those type of ones as well? Or? Yeah, we are in discussions with uh, Overweighty and their Save On brand more particularly right. uh, for locations uh, in Manitoba and uh, possibly Saskatchewan as well. Uh, that'll be great. It'll be great if there's uh, an opportunity to backfill some grocery locations that may come available as a result of uh, past acquisitions and uh, mergers. Uh, they are going into some new neighborhoods, and uh, it'll keep it competitive here. The consumers are going to win. Right. Continue winning, I'd say. So are there any new retailers coming to town that you can share with us? Uh, there's all kinds of people looking, mm-hmm. and um, uh, there's a little bit less urgency now for retailers until they get to understand a couple of things. Uh, an election, they want to know if there's any additional taxes that are going to affect their success here. Uh, as well, we still have, uh, we're in the hangover stage of uh, the target departure. Hmm. 
So while we're not necessarily directly competing with a target box in all locations, or a former target box in all locations, there's enough of them in the country that the retailers are focused on picking up that cheap real estate right. uh, in other markets. And as a result of them being old Zeller's boxes, a lot of it is cheap, and a lot of it is not so good either, but uh, it, it, it does create a little bit of a pall. But we seem to be coming out of it. The retailers are now looking again. Uh, we like, of course, uh, a mix of local, regional, and Canadian retailers as well. I think that the American retailers are not going to become any more aggressive with a low dollar because when they take these mm -hmm. profits back, uh, it's not as exciting as it was a couple of years ago. And that makes sense, but I hadn't really given that a thought, but that does make sense when you, when you say that. Yeah, well, we have uh, basically you know, higher rents in Canada and higher operating costs with our tax base and higher labor, uh, which is you know, it's great that we can afford, uh, we can afford that with our labor. Uh, everyone's happy that that can happen, but they just are a little bit more cautious because, again, in their own home markets, their, their markets are turning around. Mm. And so they're looking at opportunities that they may have passed over in the past. So, But it's, it's fluid. People come, people go. Eaton's came, Eaton's went. Kmart, Woco. <laughs> Woodward's, uh, uh, Clark's. Tops. Where I used to work, byway stores used to byway, be around. Byway, yeah. Bargain Heralds. Yeah. So, yeah, things things do change. The constant is we're still here. Yes. Yes. Um, we're going to be here for a long time. We're speaking with Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindico, and we'll be right back after we take this break for your 680 CGOB weather. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Larry McIntosh. I want to take a moment to thank you for listening to Food and Friends. I'm thrilled with the number of people who say they listen to the show and have sent in guest ideas. Should you ever have any comments or suggestions about our show, please feel free to email me anytime at larrymacintosh at peakmarket.com. And McIntosh is M-C-I-N-T-U-S-H. So that's larrymacintosh at peakmarket.com with any suggestions you might have. We're back with Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindico. So you were just not too long ago, September 10th, you were at a, a big, big event, Ambassadors for Humanitarian Gala in yes. Detroit, right? In, uh, in Dearborn. Dearborn, okay, Dearborn, I was close. Michigan. Yes, I think you were close. Uh, it, was, uh, it was really incredible to see. Uh, it was almost 800 people there. Uh, it was in the Ford Museum, which uh, Henry Ford built in 1929. I've been there, yeah. And uh, I will go back uh, and take uh, my family to see it again, notwithstanding uh, my daughters do, did a project on Rosa Parks. We got a chance to take a picture inside the bus oh. that she was on. I mean, it just every the farm equipment, the steam engines, uh, it, was, it was fabulous. And we will go back. Uh, Haley Berry was there. We got to see Haley and Steven Spielberg and Bill Ford Jr., uh, along with some of my other friends who are on the Shoah Foundation uh, board. It was just a first-rate uh, experience. And I, I think I saw it on your, I think your brother's blog, I think I saw it on. Yes. Uh, what it was I saw? That's I his mean, first you, blog. You, you, just, you just throw this out. Haley Berry was there. Uh, William Clay Ford Jr. is the grandson, great-grandson of Henry Ford, right? Yes. At the Henry Ford Museum. Steve Carroll was there. Right? Yeah, Steve Carroll. He was Carell. the MC. Uh, really funny and really on topic. Uh, it was just, everything just went off so, so magnificently. And there wasn't any good entertainment. James Taylor, I think, was there. James Taylor and his <laughs> wife were there. They played, I don't know, half a dozen of his absolute best songs. And uh, delightful to be in such a small group. We were very fortunate to be near the, near the front and get to, uh, to see them. And really uh, great to see the things that they're doing. And what Bill Ford's doing in the philanthropy in uh, Michigan. Uh, he's taking 30 people from his company under 30 years of age, and training them and teaching them to be philanthropists. Hmm. Uh, you know, it's, uh, they do so many things, and there's so much to so many people in Michigan. It's, uh, it's fabulous. Now, I was in Detroit a few years ago, probably three years ago now, and it's going through some tough times. A lot of people 
we're moving out, car industry is taking a bit of a hit. So it's good to hear positive things coming out of there. Yeah, uh, positive things, especially with Ford. But uh, they're doing so much, and they're you know they're boosters of uh, Michigan for sure. I met so many people who not only are philanthropists, but doing great things in business in Michigan, and very proud of their their Michigan relationships. Uh, very pleased. There's a company there that's making watches. They're making bicycles again, which apparently is where Henry Ford started. Hmm. Uh, some really interesting things. So Halle Berry. Uh, James Taylor, how close were you to these people? Was it like were you? Well, they were all over me, obviously. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, my wife was there, so I had to flick Haley away, uh, Hallie away. Uh, I guess uh, uh, my my wife did go up into the scrum after and take one of the survivors uh, who had given testimony to Spielberg Shoah Foundation to introduce them to them, and so uh, she went up there. Uh, I didn't, but uh, I guess we're you know. Within spitting distance, I guess. That's that's very neat. So that was the Ambassador of Humanity, Gadala. How did you end up getting there? I, only 800 people? Uh, well, we were very fortunate that um, a friend of mine from uh, Michigan was uh, the dinner chair, as well as uh, other friends of ours who are on the Shoah Foundation from New York. And uh, we talked about it, and they asked if we would come, and I said, absolutely. And uh, really... We'll do it again. We'll participate again. And notwithstanding it's not likely to be in that venue, mm -hmm. uh, we'll definitely go back and take my nephews, et cetera, to see that venue and spend a couple of days in it, I would think. Very neat. See, we were talking off air. You travel quite a bit because you teach, right? I do. Uh, I teach for the CCIM Institute, which is a Chicago-based commercial real estate uh, organization. I've been doing it since 1980. So 35 years wow. now. Uh, I don't go out as much as I used to. I used to do about four weeks a year. Uh, I can't volunteer that much time anymore, but I still participate at the national level. I'm on the board of the Education Foundation that raises scholarships for people to take these classes in the commercial real estate field. So I always think it's kind of neat. I mean, you're from Portage of Prairie. You're living in Winnipeg now. Got lots of developments, and I know you do more so outside of Manitoba. You do properties outside mm -hmm. of Manitoba, too. But here you are flying all over North America, and I think even overseas, to talk about this. Do you ever speak about these things in Manitoba? Uh, rarely, although I am. Uh, in October, I'm, I'm doing a four-day uh, CCIM 102 class in, in Winnipeg. So oh, wow. Two, two days, and then a weekend, and then another two days. But it's rare that I do... Uh, classes here because I always feel an expert is somebody who's at least 500 miles from home. And that, that, that's kind of my point, right? <laughs> I, I've been asked to speak at conferences <laughs> elsewhere in Canada, not so much in Manitoba, although I've been asked to speak at various events, but all the big ones tend to say they're in Manitoba. They're looking for people from Toronto or Vancouver to come in and talk. It's kind of an odd thing in some ways. I think it's in every industry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The local people go elsewhere and the people that are local elsewhere are here. Not that I have the expertise that you have about any subject, so I won't say that, you know, I should be speaking these things because you, you should certainly... Be. You um, should uh, be. You know what you're talking about when it comes to or real estate. Or prepared to make it up. Well, yeah, if you make it up with confidence, that works too, right? Absolutely. So do you, do you like the travel? Uh, not as much now. They've certainly taken the glamour out of it, you know, tiny airplanes, wider butt, <laughs> uh, not so many options in terms of times coming and going. It's not certainly as glamorous as it used to be, uh, but I, I do it. I do it for our industry, to give back to our industry uh, and our institute, and also to uh, look for opportunities to promote. We're speaking with Sandy Schindelman. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Food and Friends. I'm Larry McIntosh. I wanted to tell you about Peak of the Market's Recipe of the Day that will be featured in Monday's Winnipeg Free Press and at peakmarket.com. Monday's recipe will be caramel pork stir-fry. 
And this recipe has butternut squash in it, so hopefully you use Manitoba grown butternut squash. That will make it taste even better. Again, caramel pork stir fry will be featured as the recipe of the day in the Monday Winnipeg Free Press and at peakmarket.com. And both the Winnipeg Free Press and our website have a brand new recipe every day, seven days a week. So please make sure you check them out and use lots of Manitoba veggies. Peak of the Market is also on Twitter, so please follow us at Peak of the Market for recipes and Food and Friends guest updates. We currently have over 230,000 Twitter followers, and we'd love to have you follow us too. Again, we're at Peak of the Market, or you can follow me at Larry McIntosh. We'll be right back with Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindico, as we take this break for your news, sports, and weather. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Larry McIntosh. It's hard to believe, but the children have been back to school for a few weeks now, and it's fundraising time. For all of you that are involved in a school or daycare fundraiser in some way, I wanted to tell you about the Farm to School Manitoba Healthy Choice Fundraiser. This fundraiser is open to all Manitoba schools, public or private, K-12, to and all licensed daycares anywhere in the province of Manitoba. Basically, the fundraiser works like this. The students sell bundles of Manitoba-grown, peak-of-the-market vegetables to raise money for their school or daycare. It could be to raise money for a school band trip, sports tournament, new equipment for the school, whatever it might be. Bundle A has uh, carrots, cooking onions, red potatoes, and sells for $10. Bundle B has larger packs of carrots, red potatoes, and cooking onions, as well as green cabbage, parsnips, and it sells for $20. Now, the great thing about this fundraiser is that the school or daycare keeps half the selling price, a 50% profit, and that's great for any fundraiser, and it's healthy too. Last year, this fundraiser raised over $410,000 for Manitoba schools and daycares. The fundraiser began last week and runs until December 9th, so you can get all the information again. It's open to any school or daycare anywhere in Manitoba, and peak of the market growers are going to get it there by truck, by train, or even if they have to fly into a community, they'll take care of getting that there. So it's one price for the whole province. If you're interested in getting more information on the Farm to School fundraiser or to register your school or daycare, please visit their website at farmtoschool.ca. That's farmtoschool.ca. We're back with Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindico. Uh, do you like vegetables? I love vegetables. I've got to make sure my daughter's school gets in on that. Uh, uh, we can buy a lot of vegetables. You can but buy a lot of vegetables and help the school out? It's a win-win. It's uh, fabulous. What about white potatoes? Well, we sell white potatoes, but red potatoes are the important potatoes. In, do you know in Manitoba, and you know, I'm, we're not yeah. talking about you now, but in Manitoba, 80% of the potatoes that we eat are from Manitoba. Or far, our red potatoes, I should say. Our red? Our red potatoes. If you go to Ontario, which is where I was born, it's 5% of the sales is red potatoes. They eat russet potatoes, mostly PEI potatoes there. Well, we love the potatoes here. Uh, yeah. We only have them once a day. Once a day? Well, we'll work on that because there's three meals a day. What other well, vegetables? Does hash browns count? That absolutely counts. Uh, maybe twice a day. Twice a day. <laughs> French fries count? Absolutely. Or maybe it's three times a day. Well, there you go. We're up to it. You're getting your uh, five to ten servings a day right there? Almost. So you should get your daughter to do the fundraiser. Oh, I will. But uh, just to talk about the fundraiser for a moment, the neat thing, we we did a launch last week uh, at Winnipeg Cars for the Farm to School program. And what I really found, we're encouraging people this year to buy a bundle for their family in order to help out the school or daycare. But if they can afford it, can buy an extra bundle for their local food bank. That's an excellent idea. Last year, when we looked at the numbers, out of every 100 bags, 11 of them were donated to local food banks. So basically, one in 10 people bought an extra bundle or just donated one to the local food bank. I think that's fantastic. I think it's fantastic, too. And we'll we'll make sure that we do the same, especially since you deliver them. Well, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) On time. (laughs) On time. (laughs) So being in the real estate business, have you seen things change over your career? You know, certainly the Internet, uh, the amount Mm. of information available to everybody, uh, the showrooming, uh, the way we uh, react to space, uh, the move to environmentally friendly uh, facilities, now even in retail, uh, that's a big change and uh, one that we're happy to be participating in and happening to be in the uh, leading edge on. Uh, lots of changes, uh, lots of sophistication. The demographic reports and studies that we do in our our office, a uh, hundred miles ahead of where they were, uh, even a decade ago. You know, we don't 
we don't put a ring about around something and say, well, in five miles, this is who lives there. Uh, we get into what they're likely to be spending money on. And we know that drive times are more important than that concentric ring. And so we, we do a lot of drive time analysis and various uh, for every project. And we, we learn a lot and we're able to share that with retailers. And I, I know you do lots in the city of Winnipeg, but you're mentioning you do Winkler and Portage and Selkirk and other Brandon. Um, is it different in those locations? Do the demographics look different? Do they look? Yeah, the demographics are different. Uh, certainly as you get south into the Winkler market and uh, Steinbeck market, we have a younger demographic, in fact, than Winnipeg. Some of the other cities have a little bit of an older demographic, but a little bit more disposable income in various places. Uh, it's uh, the real issue when you're dealing with... Uh, communities outside the city is to try and figure out the pipeline sales and the leakage sales, those sales that go to Winnipeg and those sales that might come from Winnipeg if they're on a, oh. a major route. And that's where we really uh, need to spend a lot of time. But in general, uh, the markets outside are uh, typically more business friendly and a little bit less red tape. And you can, uh, you can deliver faster in those markets than you can here in the city. So communities like uh, Winkler and there's there's Morris and Altona and various ones in southern Manitoba where a lot of our growers are, are they affected dramatically by um, U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar? Do they do they go south more? Did, how does well, that work for a retailer? I think that at? Uh, the retailers are going south less, actually. The American retailers are a little slow coming up now with our, with our dollar, but we're keeping a lot of spending at home. And, uh, you know, that's certainly going to have an impact on jobs and, uh, and values up here. People still like to go for a ride, and they may not go for as long a period of time, and they may bring back some ideas that helps their community, and that's all great. And, and whether the U.S. dollars, I agree with you, or U.S. dollar, wherever it might be against the Canadian dollar, sometimes you want to go away for the weekend to Grand Forks or Fargo or whatever the case may be. may not do as much shopping, maybe that's not, but you're still going away. Yeah, it's... Uh, and there's some great opportunities here. I mean, look at the new hotels that have been built for staycations. Canalta just built a beautiful hotel in Selkirk uh, on one of our projects. 84 rooms, water slide, water park, uh, free breakfast with hash browns, <laughs> uh, free snacks with potato chips. Uh, so it's, uh, there's been a lot of investment in the province. And it gives people some we're going to take a break, but when we come back, we're going to ask Sandy if everyone wants to get into politics. But we'll come back right after this break. We're talking with Sandy Schoenman, President and CEO of Syndico. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Larry McIntosh. Food and Friends Radio is on TV. Each radio show is filmed and will be posted on mytoba.ca later today. So if you want to see the TV version of this or previous radio shows, please visit mytoba.ca. You can also listen to an audio podcast of Food and Friends at soundcloud.com or at the iTunes store. So please do a search for Food and Friends with Larry at mytoba.ca or soundcloud.com or the iTunes store, and all the shows will come up for your listening or viewing pleasure. And it's very important for me to mention that Food and Friends is only available because of 680 Studio B and its advertisers. So please make sure you tune in here every Saturday, Sunday, Sunday afternoon at 1, or listen live at cgob.com. We're back with Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindico. I asked you before the break, are you going to get into politics? And I was just kind of throwing it out there. What uh, are, you, are, are you thinking of it at all? Is that something I that interests I'm you? I think I'm not running for politics. I'm be running from politics. <laughs> politics. It would be uh, uh, more to the case. I know that uh, when we were in uh, Michigan and hearing the speech, uh, acceptance speech from Bill Ford Jr., All right. I immediately thought this person should be running for president. When he received, when he received an award, he said uh, he accepts this award, but not for what he's done, which is, of course, why he got it, but uh, to inspire him for what he might do. Wow. So I think, well, politics is a... A noble uh, uh, pursuit. It's certainly not one that uh, I'm interested in. I like the job security of not being there. Well, and we're going through, obviously, everybody knows a federal election. We have a provincial election coming up next year. I don't know how, I, I, thank goodness people do it, but I don't know how they do it. It's, it's just, uh, it's an interesting thing. I'll, I'll say that. It sure is. Uh, we're very thankful when we get great people to do that. Right. You should do it, for example. I've certainly heard your name thrown out there as somebody that should do it. 
And, uh, you know, I'll come and give a small donation and put a sign in my yard. Wow. But when it comes time to knocking on doors, uh, no. <laughs> I appreciate that quasi-support, really. Uh, no, it's, a little, it's, little bit of support. That, thank you very much. So what do you see in, in your business or for you in the next 5, 10 years? What do you see coming up? Well, we see, uh, you know, we have to make sure that we're, we batten down for our investors and partners and staff, you know, to, to make sure we don't have volatility to make sure that we have stability in markets and that we can see growth because we know that every decade you basically need to replace as much as 25% of your jobs. They become obsolete. They move away. Uh, the businesses aren't there. You know, we don't have a lot of travel agents employed today right. as we did 20 years ago. So I think what we need to do is we need to stay on the leading and bleeding edges of new ideas uh, wherever they are, and we need to bring them back here and hope that they can take root here. And we were talking earlier about all the retailers that have come and gone over the years, but I mean, I'm thinking bagel shops are around every corner for a while, and there's still some around, but most of them disappeared. Travel agents is a perfect example you used. You're right. Yeah. There are businesses. Things change. And everybody's got a, a quick answer. Uh, a number of years ago, a company out of North Carolina called Krispy Kreme Donuts. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of it. Absolutely. Uh, but they had some struggles, and they had some struggles in Canada, and they had some struggles also in the U.S. I think they're famous for... Uh, Donuts that killed Elvis. Uh, I don't know that that's how they market it. And anyway, so I was saying, well, you know, isn't it surprising to see some of these stores close up, especially in the urban areas? And somebody gave me the, the reason why. They said, well, it's the Atkins diet, the high-protein diet. And that's why uh, the donut shop, you know, has to reinvent itself and the people don't buy donuts. And I said, that's amazing, because I've been on almost every diet there ever was, and I never was on the diet that said you could eat donuts. <laughs> uh, but if you can get an old copy of that one, I'd like to see if I can get it back to being popular. That's very true. So do you see, what do you see a trend? Do you see a trend in a new type of retailer or spas? or what? what? A lot of uh, personal services. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, dental offices are getting bigger and more comfortable and more inviting. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, the ancillary medical things, the dermatologists that have uh, uh, sp expanded and, and grown and are trying to do the same thing on, on uh, Academy, and I think that that probably went through. Uh, lots of changes on personal services. You're not going to buy that on the Internet. I don't think you're going to get your teeth fixed on the Internet or get your hair cut on the Internet. Good point, yeah. But uh, so we like to see a lot of services, a lot of things that gyms are now popular. They were the least popular tenant you could have in a retail environment, now they're sought after. Hmm. That has changed. Yes, that's a big change. I visited a gym once. Yeah. You did? Yeah. Uh, looking to convert it to a byway? <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of converting, here, how's that for a segue? When you're, there's an old, we were talking earlier about some of the old Zeller buildings and whether it's old warehouses. And when new tenants come in, do they want to have their own building and their own size with their own... Like, or are they repurposing these well, buildings? Well, they, they try, and uh, Walmart has been pretty good at it, but basically all these stores are on plan. You should be able to walk in the same number of steps, turn left the same number of steps, and, uh, you know, and pick up a pair of blue socks. Right. And so they really want to stick to plan where they can, and that's a big part of their merchandising efforts and marketing efforts. Uh, some of them are difficult to repurpose. There's no question about it. And uh, a lot of accommodation needs to be made. So I think a lot of these stores uh, may wind up being something other than retail. And if you look at warehousing, our, our warehouse up in King Edward, our distribution center is, was built in 1962, and it's got low ceilings. And you would never go into a building like that today. I mean, it's a fantastic location because it's right in the city. But you would look at, you'd want to have four stories high or whatever it is now. So a lot, of, a lot of people would look at that too, I would assume. Lots of things change. The way transportation and trucking has changed has really uh, dictated the size of truck courts you need for a new industrial building. Uh, today, with speed and drivers on the road, you want to have often two to one, uh, two uh, places to store a trailer to one loading right in front so mm. that they don't have to cross the street or, or go around the other side of the building to drop their load and go inside and drop their load and then uh, get another trailer and go. We're speaking with Sandy Schindelman, president and CEO of Shindico. We'll be right back after this break.
Welcome back to Food and Friends. Please join me next Sunday at 1 o'clock when my guest will be Andrea, Adriana Finley, the Farm to School Manitoba Coordinator. Adriana will tell us about the Farm to School program and how it can benefit students both for their schools and daycares and health clubs. My guest today has been Sandy Schindelman, President and CEO of Shindico. This has been a lot of fun talking and catching up with you. It's been a while. Well, it has been, and I really enjoy doing it and seeing you and Shelley at any opportunity. I'm going to be there. And I want to encourage everybody to take advantage of you at the peak of the market uh, for that fundraiser and to eat your veggies. Well, thank you very much, and, and we appreciate it. And we're going to see you at Jets games, I'm sure. Yes, you are. Uh, I missed the, the Tuesday night game. I did see it on uh, on television. Are you are you moose, are you going getting moose tickets too? I am going oh. to go. We'll see uh, you there, and uh, you won't see me also at those exhibition games. <laughs> <laughs> but for regular season, we oh, will yes, see you. Yes, yes, yes. I'll, I'll be coming out. Thank you, Sandy, for being on Food and Friends. Thank you. Thanks to 680 CJOB's Nicole, who produces our show, and Riley, who operates the camera, as well as the teachers of the broadcasting and media arts program at Tech Fox High School. And thank you for listening. Take care, and please. Don't forget to eat your veggies. Thank you. Thank you. That's-